Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Malik Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'in اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ به تعالى من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره الكافرون صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد most respected viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته this is the twelfth episode of our study on the Quran which we captioned thematic study of the Quran. <clears throat> uh, in this uh, episode, we're going to take up another theme, or uh, we're going to make a follow-up on a theme that we once discussed. That is the divine source of the Quran, the fact that the Qur'an is from Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth, that it was not a fabrication of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. So in our discussion today, we're going to make a follow-up. And what we're going to, uh, to do in this episode is to present testimonies, testimonies of non-Muslims on the divine source of the Quran. Let us remember that in our discussion of this on this topic earlier, we made the argument or we stated that uh, for a believer in the Quran, once you quote verses of the Quran in which Allah clearly states that it was He that revealed the Quran, a believer would believe it. And then, however, for a non-believer, even when you cite verses of the Qur'an, he would say that uh, he did not believe in the Qur'an. So why quote verses of the Qur'an that say that it was a revelation from God? For these kind of persons or for these kind of kinds of people, what needs to be done is to present rational arguments that are logical you know, logical reasoning. The Quran itself did that, and we cited a number of verses in that regard, some of which were challenging people who think that the Quran was a fabrication by Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Quran challenged that they should come up with something similar to that. In addition to that, the Qur'an made references or presented rational arguments for any rational thinking person, those arguments are quite convincing. Now here today, in line with this kind of rational argument, we're going to present testimonies of non-Muslims who attested to the fact that the Qur'an could not have been a human fabrication. 
it must have been from a divine source from a supreme being now let us not make the mistake of thinking that we need to support the Quran or to support our arguments about the divinity of the Quran with quotations from non-Muslims let us not make that mistake we don't need that to to convince ourselves about the fact that the Quran is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala however we will do that only because of the axiom there is an axiom or a dictum in Arabic it says وَالْفَضْلُ مَا شَهِدَ بِهِ الْعَادَى or وَالْحَقُّ مَا شَهِدَ بِهِ الْعَدُو that is to say truth is reinforced when an enemy confirms it truth is reinforced when somebody who is an opponent to you confirms it it is only on the basis of this axiom that we are going to present some of the statements of some non-muslim scholars philosophers and thinkers who attested and acknowledged and admitted the fact that the quran could not have been from a mortal from a human being therefore it is on the basis of this dictum that we are going to make this presentation in addition to this this is as if we're trying to address also some people that are now especially among some of our young people and even among older ones uh, that uh, started thinking that there is no God and that this universe is existing on its own and therefore since they reject the existence of God there is no way they will accept that there was any revelation that came from him and these people look up to Europeans as their models or they get some of this thinking from them so we are telling them we are going to address them that look this is what the people you think have superior mentality or have superior intellect than you this is what they are saying about the Quran and for African Christians who take white men as their role model in almost everything we're going to all it's like we're going to talk to them and address them that look the people that brought the Bible to you the people that brought the Bible to you listen to what they are saying about the Quran listen to what they are saying about the Quran therefore uh, we, we need to make this clarification so that no one would make the, the mistake of thinking that you see we have some doubts and we need to cite the statements of some non-Muslims to dismiss our doubts. No, we don't have any doubt regarding the Quran. But for those reasons I stated, we're going to refer to the statements of some non-Muslims. There are, you can say, hundreds of that, of those kind of statements. Yes, hundreds. But we cannot bring all of them. We may just bring just a few of them. And one of the most Fam famous one are statements made by Dr. Maurice Bukel, a French surgeon who was uh, raised as a Christian and he stated this in the introduction to his book the Bible I mean the Quran and science the Bible the Quran and science in a nutshell uh, Maurice Bukail compared the Bible and the Quran to science uh, trying to see which of the two books really agrees with science and he came to the conclusion that you see the Quran is most compatible with science the statements of about uh, I mean nature facts about nature presented in the Quran agree with findings in science today 
And we're going to, inshallah, in one of the episodes that shall come, we're going to discuss Quran and science. But we will, even when we are talking about the compatibility between Quran and science, that is, not to, that is not about trying to use science to prove the Quran, but vice versa. Quran would be used to prove science. Anything in science that doesn't agree with the, with the Quran, it is science that needs to be dropped, not the Quran. So Maurice Bukhari, you know, after studying the Quran and the Bible in comparison to science, he, he made certain conclusions. And some of them include his statement where he says, it was in a total objective spirit. It was in a total objective spirit and without any preconceived ideas that I examined the Quranic revelation. I was looking for the degree of compatibility between Quranic text and the data of modern science. I knew from translations that the Quran often made allusion to all sorts of natural phenomena. But I only had a summary knowledge. It was only when I examined the text very closely in Arabic, it was only when I examined the text, that is the text of the Quran, very closely in Arabic that I kept a list of them, at the end of which I had to acknowledge I had to acknowledge the evidence in front of me. The Quran did not contain a single statement that was assailable from a modern scientific point of view. That is to say, the Quran did not contain a single statement that is not in agreement with modern science. Of course, there could be some scientific theories that may not agree with the Quran. To the extent of their disagreement of the Quran, they would be rejected. They would be rejected. But then Maurice Bukail did not stop at that. He went on to say, after an extensive review of what the Quran had to say about the issues pertaining to science, which included many scientifically verified facts, of that period, Maurice Bukai concluded saying in the general conclusion section of his book, the Bible, the Quran and science, he said, in view of the state of knowledge in Muhammad's day, that is if we refer ourselves to the time of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, he said in view of the state of knowledge in Muhammad's day, it is inconceivable that many of the statements in the Quran which are connected with sign could have been the work of a man. It's inconceivable that it could, they could have been the work of a man. And I think this is a point that we made when we were discussing the divinity of the Quran. And some of the statements were going to cite of some other Europeans I mean, non-Muslims would still further reinforce this particular fact. But we made it earlier in one of the episodes when we were discussing the divinity of the Quran, the fact that the Quran is from God, is the word of God. We made the statement that the Prophet ﷺ was an unlettered person and therefore he could not read and write and he lived all his life in the desert. But imagine his descriptions of certain natural phenomena, his descriptions of different sorts of vegetations, his descriptions of, a num of, of cosmic reality, his descriptions of mountains. You can say there are mountains in Saudi Arabia, but what about mountains that, he, that the Quran says some of the mountains coming up with different sorts of colors. And it is only recently that it was discovered that in China, there is a mountain that has, you know, different sort of colorings. Did he travel to China? Did the Prophet travel to China? 
Or did the Prophet Sallallahu sailed on the Atlantic Ocean when he was describing the ocean in a very, very perfect manner? So this is, in summary, what Maurice Bukail, you know, stated. It is, however, perfectly legitimate, he continued, not only to regard the Quran as the expression of a revelation, but also to award it a very special place on account of the guarantee of authenticity it provides and the presence in it of scientific statements which when studied today appear as a challenge to human explanation this is about the statements made by Maurice Bukail let us look at what another scholar a non-muslim scholar also said that is Boswell Smith, he writes in a book he wrote, Muhammad and Islam, Muhammad and Islam, he said, I boldly assert that one day the loftiest of human philosophies, that is the highest, the topmost of human philosophies and the most veracious principles of Christianity will confess and bear witness that the Quran is the word of God and that Muhammad is the messenger of God. He did not fabricate the Quran. This is what Boswell uh, stated. Now, he continued, he continued in the line we, were, we, we discussed in an earlier episode. He said, an unlettered, unlearned prophet was chosen by God, unlettered, unlearned, was chosen by God. Those who have been following us would remember the verse in Surah Al-Ankabut, which we read, where the Quran is presenting this kind of rational argument. وَمَا كُنْتَ تَتْلُو مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَلَا تَخُطُّهُ بِيَمِينِكِ إِذَا لَرَتَابَ الْمُبُطِلُونَ وَمَا كُنْتَ تَتْلُو مِنْ قَبْلِهِ مِنْ كِتَابٍ You did not use to read any book before the revelation of the Qur'an. وَلَا تَخُطُّهُ بِيَمِينِكَ And you are not writing with your hands. You, you don't know how to write. The Prophet ﷺ didn't know how to read. Neither did he know how to write. إِذَا لَرْتَابَ الْمُفْتِلُونَ If you were able to read and you were able to write, then people that are given to vanities would have doubted the Quran. They would say, no, he reads from, uh, you know, uh, some other scriptures. Even in that, even, even, even with that, some of the, uh, you know, kuffar, some of the disbelievers in Mecca were accusing him that he, he used to go and take, and listen to, you know, some, 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 some earlier, you know, uh, what is it? earlier monks that existed before him. So Boswell continues saying an unlettered and unlearned prophet was chosen by God to bring the Quran to mankind. A book that has in the course of history a book that is the Quran that has in the course of history produced thousands of other books and treatises. You can't imagine books that have been written as extracts from the Quran. Thousands. Now you can talk of millions and treatises brought libraries into being because all, all the knowledge that Muslim that, that was produced by the Muslim mind all the knowledge that was produced by the Muslim mind, the volumes of books that were produced by the Muslim mind or the Muslim intellect is product of the Quran. They are all product of the Quran. So he said, brought libraries into being and filled them with books and placed before mankind laws and philosophies and educational intellectual and ideological systems but could all this have been brought by an unlettered person who was not reading and writing this father confirms the fact that the quran 
was from a supreme being Allah tabarak wa ta'ala wa innahu la tanzilu rabbil alamin nazala bihi ar-ruh al-amin ala qalbika litakuna min al-munzirin bi lisan arabi mubin he arose boswell continued he arose in an environment where there was no trace of learning and civilization in the whole of medina in the whole of medina there were only 11 people who knew how to read and write only 11 people in medina and in all the branches of the Quraysh, in all the branches that is the clan of the, the prophet وسلم, in all the branches of the Quraysh in mecca and its environs not more than 17 people were literate so he did not even grow up in a literate community, in a literate society. But look at the laws presented by the Quran. Look at the, look, look at, look at the laws about family life, family laws. Look at laws presented by the Quran regarding leadership, justice and equity. Look at the laws presented by the Quran regarding the protection of life. Look at the laws presented by the Quran regarding business transaction. That when you are going in to enter into a debt, that is to say when you want to borrow, to take loan, factubu, write it. Could you imagine that this was revealed in a community that didn't, I mean the culture of writing, the culture of reading wasn't there. Virtually it wasn't there. But the Quran was, say, was telling them, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, idha tadayantum bidaynin ila ajalim musamman faktubu, wal yaktub baynakum katibun bil adil, wala ya'ba katibun an yaktub kama allamahu allahu fal yaktub. Up to the end of the verse. Can you imagine that this was revealed in a community that was unlettered, not a literate community? These are arguments that Boswell Smith, I mean, was presented in order to attest to the fact that the Quran could not have been a human fabrication. It must be from a divine source. That is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, I think the submission made by, 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 by Boswell is such a lengthy submission. Uh, but let us just read the last part of it. He said, the teachings of the Quran, which mention knowledge, the teachings of the Quran, which mentions knowledge, and the pen that was mentioned in its opening verses, that is the verses that were first revealed. They came with Bismillah rahman rahim Iqra Bismi Rabbika Ladi Khalaq, read in the name, read in the name of your Lord, who creates khalaqal insana min alaq he created man from a clot of congealed blood iqra wa rabbukal akram read and your lord is most bountiful alladhi 'allama bil qalam he that he that uh, teaches with the pen he that teaches with the pen now he says the mention of pain in these first verses brought about a tremendous transformation in I mean it brought about a tremendous transformation to the world Islam proclaimed study to be a religious duty and made the black ink of the scribe and the scholar to be superior to the red blood of the Mataya. Thanks to the teachings of the Quran and its emphasis. Thanks to the teachings of the Quran and its emphasis on the cultivation of knowledge. Countless scholars made their appearance and wrote innumerable books. Different scientific disciplines were derived from the Quran 
and spread across the world by Muslim thinkers. The world was illumined. That is to say, the world was lightened with the light of the Quran and the culture of Islam. Allahu Akbar. This is a testimony from a non-Muslim. We would have to stop here not because we have exhausted all the testimonies. In the next episode we will continue to present this because as I said we intend by this to address doubting minds or confused minds and also to address our fellow African Christians and Christians all over to the fact that look this is what your fellow Christians are saying regarding the Quran why don't you come and accept it we'll have to stop here wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa subhanaka allahumma la ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal alimul hakim wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh